Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise we're going to be looking at this concept called an outlier. An outlier is uh, essentially an observation or something that appears to not really belong. Uh, like if you were to ever see me playing baseball or something you might see me and think, boy that person just does not belong on that team. Uh, either an observation or an entity within that data set that that appears to be much too small in absolute value uh, or much too large to to be a part of that particular data set so there's different ways of, of uh, identifying them and we'll look at more as we progress through the material at this point we're going to use this this methodology that takes advantage of the first and third quartiles using those we can obtain this interquartile range and then we have a basic rule of thumb to say an observation is an outlier if it is less than the value of the first quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that gives us a lower bound. So if we see an observation that is smaller than that, it means that well, it's, it's it's really small relative to all of the other observations in that data set so maybe there's something wrong with it maybe there's a mistake or maybe it's actually the most interesting value in that data set because it's sort of that extreme scenario all it means to be an outlier is that you should maybe take a closer look at it and just see if there's something wrong or see if there's something quite interesting so if it's less than this value, we would call it an outlier, and that's just a red flag to say, hey, come and look at this observation. Or if it's greater than, if it's greater than an upper bound, which is the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So if we have an observation that appears to be too large uh, to be a part of that data set again it's just a red flag that says you know maybe we should take a look at this and see what's what's going on so a few pieces of information we need we need the third quartile first quartile and the iqr now we've uh, gone through some exercises before where we've used this uh, formula for an index value so we can calculate the location of each of these quartiles You'll notice I already have the data set sorted from smallest to largest to make this whole process uh, a little bit easier and faster. The formula for the index was the percentile of interest divided by 100 times the sample size. So when we're looking at quartiles, the relevant percentiles would be the first, uh, sorry, the, 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 the 25th percentile would be the first quartile the 50th percentile would be the second quartile, the 75th percentile, the third quartile. Just try saying that 10 times really fast. My goodness. So for the first quartile, 25, that's 100 in that denominator, 25 divided by 100. Our sample size here is 10. So this is going to be 2.5. If we have a non-integer value, we round this up to three. So my first quartile is in the third position. And so that's, uh, let's color code this. So that's right here. So there's my Q1. For my Q3, I'm going to, let me just cheat, reuse this formula. Why is that a, not an eraser? So this will be my 75th percentile. So then that's going to be 7.5, which we round up to eight. And so here's my third quartile right here in the eighth position. There's Q3. Now, what do these quartiles mean? Well, as you may recall, the, the first quartile, or the 25th percentile, means that 25% of the observations are less than or equal to that first quartile. 
the third quartile, well, that means that 75% of my observations are less than or equal to it. But in this instance, what is more relevant for us is that if 75% are less than or equal to, then 25% is greater than or equal to. And we use that information or that fact to calculate then the interquartile range. So the IQR, let's uh, get this in pink, what's going on? So this is my interquartile range. My IQR is then the difference between 93.5, which is my third quartile, and my first quartile, which is 75.5. Point one, and so that value, where'd my calculator go? <clears throat> 93.5 minus 75.1, so my IQR is 18.4. Okay, so we have Q3 is 93.5, Q1 75.1, IQR, the difference between those two is 18.4. Now to get our limits to identify an outlier, let me call it uh, my lower limit is Q1, so 75.1 minus 1.5 times my IQR, which we calculated is 18.4. And so that lower limit now, 75.1 minus 1.5 times 18.4, so 47.5, 47.5 is my lower limit, my upper is Q3, so 93.5 minus 1.5 times 18.4. Ninety three point five plus one point five times eighteen point four one twenty one. Is that right? Ninety three point five plus one point five times eighteen point four one twenty one point ten point one. So there we have our lower limit and our upper limit. Do we have any outliers? Well, it looks like we might have one right here. 46 is less than our lower limit, so that would identify as an outlier. It's somewhat smaller than we might expect to see uh, in this data set. As for the upper limits, it doesn't look like there are any on the upper side uh, that are unreasonably large or that appear to be too large to have come from this data set. Uh, so there's nothing on that side. So that's all there is to it. We've identified that observation as being maybe a little bit odd. It's pretty small considering the rest of the values in this data set. So maybe we should go and take a closer look at it, see if it's a mistake or maybe see if there's something interesting there. Okay, so that's all there is to um, identifying outliers using the interquartile range method. Okay, thanks for watching.